In this video, let's talk about Patrick Mahomes' throwing hand being seen in a rap at practice, a very heartwarming Legereus Sneed story about his interception in the Denver game. Then let's talk about the referee who Chiefs fans basically hate with a burning passion that is going to be officiating Sunday's game against the Texans and much freaking more. But first, how about those? Chiefs? All right, let's jump right into this video, starting out with a couple of notes made by Arrowhead Pride Zone Pete Sweeney. He had a couple of notes today of practice that he was able to observe during a portion of it, and this is what he had to say. Here's Patrick Mahomes warming up during our brief media look. Mahomes has a clear wrap on his right hand. All 53 players were spotted, plus wide receiver McCole Hardman working for the second straight day as he works to come off of IR. I noticed offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy pull Hardman off the return line to chat for a minute or two. Needless to say, the offense is ready to get number 17 back. And yeah, while I agree with him about Hardman and them wanting him back, I seriously doubt he comes off of IR this week and plays against the Texans. Anyway, Sweeney then said QB Patrick Mahomes appeared on Wednesday's initial injury report with a right hand listing, but was also designated as a full participant. The expectation is he'll practice fully all week and be fine to play on Sunday versus the Texans. And according to the Chiefs injury report that dropped today, that has rang true thus far. Patrick Mahomes fully participated all week, so Wednesday and Thursday, and while you never want to see your QB1's throwing hand listed, it does seem like he's trending towards playing. And also worth noting, everyone on the 53-man roster practiced today, and out of everyone listed on the injury report, everyone was a full go, aside from wide receiver Kadarius Toney, as he is still nursing that hamstring injury back to health. Safety Nazi Johnson, who was limited Wednesday, fully participated today, as did Mahomes with his hand, Juju with his toe, Bolton with the groin, and the list goes on. The only new addition that I noticed on the injury report, however, is defensive tackle Derek Nottie. He did fully participate today, but his Achilles is the injury now listed on the report, and that's new. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that for tomorrow's practice and see if he's trending upwards or downwards of playing in Sunday's game. And real quickly, while I have this shirt on, I want to plug it. This is the highest selling shirt that I've ever made. It is the Tony Joka shirt. It's also the little emoji guy that goes up on the lamp during my live streams. This shirt is for sale on my merch store. If you want to check it out, link is in the description down below. And as far as the Texans are concerned, their wide receiver too, Nico Collins, still hasn't practiced all week due to his foot injury and may not play Sunday. Meanwhile, Brandon Cooks, their wide receiver one, he didn't participate yesterday, but was limited today and therefore, in my opinion, is potentially trending upwards of playing Sunday. We'll have to wait and see. Offensive lineman Justin McRae, defensive backs Steven Nelson, yes, the former chief, and Derek Stingley Jr. and running back Damian Pierce have not practiced all week. And the only other noticeable changes were that left tackle Laramie Tunzel. He fully participated today after missing yesterday due to illness. Defensive lineman Kurt Hennish and Roy Lopez were limited yesterday, but fully participated today. And then defensive lineman and former chief Taylor Stallworth did not participate today after being limited yesterday with the calf injury. And some more Chiefs news, offensive line coach Andy What in the Heck spoke to the media today. And in case you didn't know, he has a son in the NFL named Charlie What in the Heck, who was a fourth round pick back in 2020 by the Houston Texans. And he's listed on the Texans depth chart as their backup left tackle behind Laramie Tunzel. So while he may not be starting, O-line coach Andy Heck will technically be playing against his son. At least, you know, he's coaching the Chiefs, his son's, you know, you get what I'm saying. It's random, but it's a fun little note for this upcoming game. Somehow, you know, even though he's playing professional football, I end up paying for uh, dinner, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's extra fun for me to have uh, Charlie competing in this league uh, in a sport that's, you know, so near and dear to our family. Coach Heck was then asked about Orlando Brown Jr. and the whole situation of him betting on himself this season by staying on the franchise tag instead of taking the deal the Chiefs offered him. And he didn't really say much about Orlando's play. He just said, Orlando is a true professional, knows what he needs to work on and works on it every day. A nice, very safe, generic answer. However, PFF has graded Orlando very well over the last Four out of five games, just take away the Bengals game because that was not a good one. But he is definitely, on average, climbing up overall in his play lately, especially compared to earlier on in the season. Nonetheless, 
can't sugarcoat it, both he and Andrew Wiley have still allowed a combined 79 pressures on the season, which is the most allowed pressures of any tackle duo in the NFL and averages out to approximately six pressures a game just from the tackles alone. Coach Heck did mention that Lucas Niang is back and working, looking healthy, very athletic for his size. He's picked up right where he left off. Nice compliment, but he didn't answer the question that we all want to know. Is he a serious thought? in coach's mind to make any plays at the right tackle position. That's what we want to know. So he didn't answer that. I'm sorry. But if there's ever a game to test the waters with Lucas Niang, it's got to be this Sunday against the 1-11-1 Texans. If the Chiefs somehow are up enough points in the game to relieve some of the starters, they got to put him in and test the waters. If they don't, then I think they are only going to view him as a backup tackle for the rest of the season. Another question, speaking of tackles, that I get asked a lot about is the offensive lineman Darian Kennard, the rookie drafted in the fifth round of this year's draft, somebody that they thought may be the potential right tackle, but he has not played all year, and I think he's just slowly being developed. Well, Coach Heck spoke on him today saying he's grown a lot, at playing the tackle position, but they have also been giving him some work in at guard and is taking well to the guard position there. I also think that Kennard was ready to go in at the guard position when Joe Tooney was out and Nick Allegretti was in, meaning that if Allegretti or Trey Smith in that game got injured, Kennard would have been the next guard up. Kennard the guard, nice ring, but it's interesting and worth noting. I don't know if he'll ever be a tackle for the team. They are working him in as guard. We'll have to wait and see probably till next season. Next up, the D-line coach Joe Cullen spoke about Frank Clark today, who we all know has been battling a lot of sickness on and off the past year or more with a chronic stomach issue. And Coach Cullen said he's doing as well as he can be to eat right, drink right, get his mind right, and work through it all. He then specifically mentioned that Frank was not well during the Bengals game and many players would have opted to sit out, but instead, Frank persevered through the game. And out of curiosity, I did check his grades on PFF for the Bengals game, and he graded out above average for himself, at least on the season, if you look at all of his games, and he had the second best tackling grade on the entire season as well. So as Frank Clark continues to battle through his chronic stomach issue, he's still making plays as he is able. Something else I found interesting today was specifically about cornerback Legereus Sneed. You guys remember the pass that he picked off near the end of the Denver game this past Sunday? Well, it turns out that he told Juan Thornhill he was gonna get a pick before it happened, and he actually said, just block for me when I pick off this mug. I am sorry to say though, as you could tell in that video, that Juan Thornhill did not block for him, but hey, Sneed still got the INT, and the craziest part about the whole thing is that last Sunday was the one-year anniversary of Legereus Sneed's late brother's death to the exact day. So not only did he say he was going to get a pick, he did do it, and he did it on a very painful and memorable day in honor of his late brother. He also said he was going to keep the ball to remember the moment. I was just meant, you know, today was the day my brother died last year. That's crazy. Well, you you got to keep the ball, bro. I am. The story of Legereus Sneed is a crazy one, and I know I'm not alone when I am say I'm glad he's here and playing such a valuable role on the Chiefs' defense. Hopefully, hopefully, he gets extended and stays here for years to come. I mean, he certainly earned it in my opinion. He's currently the second highest graded defender on the team outside of Chris Jones and the fifth highest graded overall on the entire team league-wide. If you look at that, he's the third highest highest graded cornerback overall, the third highest graded in coverage, leads all cornerbacks in sacks with four, the second person has three, QB hurries with 13, the second most is five, and also in tackles at 71, the second most being 59. He's certainly a bright spot on the defense that does struggle in areas, but he is one whose value on the team is crucial, in my opinion, so shout out to the legend, Legereus Sneed. All right, from here, we gotta talk about something. Listen in, listen up, specifically about the referee who got assigned to the Chiefs versus Texans game. But before I do, I want to clarify on the front end that I have been consistent in my stance on the officiating this year throughout the league, but I do not blame any losses this season on the officiating, specifically against the Chiefs. It's just been very inconsistent per referee group per game and the lack of accountability and transparency in the explanation post game drives me up the freaking wall. For example, I don't blame the loss on this per se. There was much more that went wrong in this game than the penalty, but what in God's green earth did Chris Jones say to Matt Ryan to cause that penalty at the end of the Colts game? We still do not know and probably never will. He was flagged for abusive language, so your guess is as good as mine, that little mean man. So that was certainly 
a bad call, although the Chiefs completely imploded in that game on all facets of the ball, specifically, especially on special teams. And another bad call that you guys may recall, one of the worst ones I've ever seen, even though the Chiefs won this game, was the roughing the passer penalty on Chris Jones during Monday Night Football against the Raiders way back in Week 5. You guys remember that play? I know you do. Chris Jones strip sacks Derek Carr, taking the ball away mid-sack on the way to the ground, and even braces one of his two arms on the ground in an attempt to not put his full body weight on the quarterback. Well, the roughing the passer call was basically because he didn't put both hands down as a better attempt to not put his full body weight on Derek Carr, even though he had the freaking ball in his other hand. Well, the referee who is going to be officiating Chiefs versus Texans happens to be the same referee who called that exact penalty on Chris Jones, and he happens to be the same referee who officiated the Chiefs and Bucks Super Bowl, and happens to be the same referee who called the holding penalty on Eric Fisher during the Chiefs and Steelers playoff game back in 2017, the one that Travis Kelsey trashed post-game, more on that in a moment, and that man's name is Carl. I am a washed up fogey Sheffers, aka KC's enemy number one out of all referees on the face of the entire planet. Though many people might have forgotten back in 2017, Travis Kelsey actually got fined for saying this about Sheffers post game after the Chiefs lost to the Steelers in that 2017 playoff game. For it to end like that, with the, the ref literally taking it out of our hands, um, that hurts. That, that, that wasn't a hold on my guy, Eric Fisher, and sure enough, it, I hope 7-2 doesn't go the entire offseason thinking it was his fault. That was, uh, that was flat out. It's ignorance. The ref number 51 shouldn't even be able to wear a zebra jersey ever again. He shouldn't even be able to wear a footlocker. And while Kelsey has since apologized for that, and even recently on his podcast with his brother said it's one of the dumbest things he's ever said, I do not think that half-blind zebra known to some as Carl Cheffers will ever forget that the greatest tight end to ever play the game said that he shouldn't even be able to work at footlocker which is absolutely hilarious, I love that. But I do wonder what Kelsey thinks about his best friend, Patrick Mahomes, working at Foot Locker nowadays. Just your typical sneakerhead working here for the employee discount. All right, seriously though, back to the point here. Regardless of the Chiefs history with Cheffers, I don't think he's intentionally robbing the team because he's petty and Kelsey said mean things about that man, but I will say that the roughing the passer penalty on Chris Jones was definitely a wild one and Cheffers was lucky to get out of there alive. Okay, maybe it's not that bad, but he is lucky that he's not officiating this weekend at Arrowhead because after that penalty, remember, all of Arrowhead booed the heck out of him off and on for the rest of the game, causing his voice to crack on a penalty call later in the game because he was very scared and the crowd was quite possibly one more penalty away from hopping the stands and storming the field to find this fragile old man. The only real good news here is that because Cheffers is now officiating the game on Sunday, he more than likely will not call another Chiefs game for the rest of the season after this, and while I do not think the Chiefs will lose this game against the Texans and definitely don't think it's going to come down to the officiating, I'm glad to say we hopefully huh, will not have to see this man's face again until next season. What about you guys? Are you glad as well that he won't be officiating any Chiefs postseason games, or do you not really care either way? Also, do you agree with me that this guy is definitely Chiefs fans' enemy number one when it comes to referees? Let me know in the comments down below, and until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.